What's up, my dudes? Monster Energy Supercross 3 early gameplay. Wow, we already have this. This is kind of crazy. It's like a day after the trailer. So let me just say this right off the bat. This is not actually going to be real early gameplay because I don't have access to early gameplay, okay? And I don't want to try to strip somebody else's gameplay because that's kind of not... You just really shouldn't take people's content like that, so I'm not going to do that to anybody. Um, and plus, it there probably is, could be getting like copyrighted for doing stuff like that or get a, get a strike on the channel, so I don't want to do anything like that. And most of those gameplays that you see out there, those early gameplays of Supercross 3... Pretty much every single one of those people probably have some kind of like deal, some kind of like sponsorship type deal with Milestone, and that's how they have that gameplay. You understand what I'm saying? So, but either way, I still think it's really important for me to come in here and talk about this. So if you're wanting to see the actual gameplay, this is not the video for you. But if you want to get even better information and oversight about it, then this is the video for you. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to go in here and talk about it because this is really interesting. So I'm sure pretty much the main general consensus, if you go watch any of that early gameplay, is probably going to be something along the lines of like, what the fuck is this? Uh, <laughs> I could definitely see where a lot of people are going to be kind of thinking that way about it. And trust me, I, I don't like necessarily disagree with you if you have that sort of opinion. You know, if you have that opinion, like what the hell is going on? Why does this look so shitty? Like, I don't necessarily disagree with you. But what I will say is it's finally seeming to actually be some kind of different physics system to it, okay? And this is a really big thing here if you understand milestone games, sort of the history of them and everything. Like, when, typically when you see a new milestone game, like the new trailer for it or the new gameplay or whatever, you'll see like maybe a 5% difference of the actual look of the game and the physics of the bike and all that. Maybe a 5% difference. It basically looks like the same game that you've been getting every single year, right? But with this new gameplay that I've personally seen of Supercross 3, it at least looks like something different in a way. Like, it, there's at least something different to it to the core of the physics you understand what i'm saying you can tell the core of the physics look different now i will admit it's it's one of the most janky looking unfinished physics i've ever seen in, in a modern day motocross game i will say that but at least it's something different you know what i'm saying like it, the the amount of repetitive over and over and over physics system that we've had in these milestone games like five percent difference each year in the physics but it's still the same old you know boring ass milestone in air physics well now it's actually looking like the potential to be something a little bit different to the core of the physics you know what i'm saying versus just sitting there um you know changing the just the top layer of the physics it's actually like they've somewhat dug deep down into the physics and it looks like they've really changed something so this is the whole crazy part about this shit and the interesting part about this shit is it basically looks like you mixed the first official monster new supercross game with like mx versus atv unleashed or some shit right <laughs> so it it certainly seems to have gotten this whole mx versus atv sort of influence since they went to the thq thq nordic parent company which is the same parent company of mx versus atv so as you guys know they did that a little while back where milestone sold out to mx versus atv's parent company so they're kind of under the same umbrella now right and we were all kind of wondering like are they going to be able to take some of the physics are they going to be able to you know is it going to kind of have some of the mx versus atv air physics and that sort of feel to it and believe it or not it's actually kind of looking like that now i will admit it, it kind of has this look to it like you're taking this super old outdated like unleashed sort of physics and kind of warping it and twisting it and melding it together with like newer milestone physics so it's giving it this really bizarre weird janky unfinished look it certainly does look like that but you can just tell in the way that the that like kind of how they're jumping the jumps and just kind of the way i don't know it just has more of that MX versus ATV look to it, which is a really good thing. I can't stress to you how much, how good of a thing that is. But on the flip side, 
it basically looks like a mobile game. I mean, literally, you could look at some of that newer Monster Hunter Supercross 3 gameplay and and literally mistake it for, like, a mobile motocross game gameplay. I'm not even shitting you. Like, it, it literally looks like some McDonald's physics. Uh, but I, I don't want people to get twisted and get so off because at least it's something different looking, and we still don't know exactly how it's going to feel, right? And this is going to sound crazy to some of you guys that think I'm like this big milestone hater, this big, you know, whatever, like I'm all against milestone, I can never accept anything that they ever do, whatever the fuck. And I'm actually somewhat optimistic for this. I really am, because it's, it's finally like they're getting it in their fucking head that they have to dig deeper into the physics for it to ever become something, right? And this is the first step and the first stage of doing that that okay even though it looks really janky looks really unpolished looks kind of weird looks you know kind of janky the animations like moving around and of course it still is an alpha they still have like three or four months whatever till the game actually comes out we know that not really a whole lot is going to be changed from now until then we know that but just oh my god i can't even describe the, the amount of like fresh breath of fresh air this feels to me just that it's anything different finally it's something something different than the same old standard ass milestone it's too way too easy looking physics it, it somewhat looks kind of like there's actually like a jumping up in the air now right even though it is it is janky it is a little bit weird is it is a little bit floaty looking still they, they still need to do quite a bit of tweaking on that like it literally to me if i could explain it to you in a simple way it looks it looks way more like MX versus ATV Unleashed mixed with the official Monster Energy Supercross game when in reality what it should look like is more like Reflex mixed with the official Monster Energy Supercross game. If they can get it more like that, then they'll be they'll be cooking, you know what I'm saying? But they're not really, it's not really to that. It's like the early stages of kind of injecting a little bit of that MX versus ATV physics feel to the milestone games, right? That's kind of what it looks like to me. It's like very, very early on stages of them trying to make it more like that. And come on, guys, you just got to admit, the MX versus ADB physics is just the standard. It's just the these other motocross games that have a completely different physics system in an arcade, in the arcade realm, not talking about simulators, but in the arcade realm, it's just you can't beat that base MX versus ATV feel like that reflex, you know, right around that reflex alive, um, untamed, that whole sort of era. That is the the base of motocross gaming physics, period. You, you know what I'm saying? So these other companies that try to start from complete scratch and make a full-blown motocross game, it just doesn't ever seem to really get to that feel and that point that like reflex was at or alive was at you know like it never seems to be able to get quite back to that point but this is really interesting because they're at least the track i saw they're kind of like going for more of a wider track more of like a the jumps have a little a little more pop you up in there you kind of actually feel like when you jump in the air it looks different than when you're on the ground whereas that was one of the most absolutely annoying frustrating things to me being that i've played all these motocross games going to these milestone games when you're on the ground and when you jump in the air it doesn't even feel different it feels like the same thing it doesn't even feel like there's a difference in the physics of the ground in the air there's no like you know how in real life when you jump in the air it's actually like a feeling like you you go from being on the ground and once those tires leave the ground and that suspension um you know decompresses right then it's like it's like a feeling it's like an experience like a boom you, you're in the air now right whereas with the milestone games you're just on the ground and you're jumping and you're back on the ground and you're jumping and you never really get that feeling of popping up in the air jumping up in the air and that is what i noticed a little bit of in that newer gameplay of supergross 3 um so really it, it seems to have a little bit more of that difference of on the ground and in the air, which is a, a big positive, uh, you know, but nobody's really going to know how it feels till we really play it. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I don't even, you know, I'm going here saying I'm really optimistic and, you know, think this could be something cool. It, it's probably not going to be all that great in Supercross 3. I guess in my mind, I'm looking like way later on down the road here a little bit, like, you know, with them injecting a little bit of that MX versus ATV feel to it, I'm thinking about how 
what is Supercross 5 going to feel like, right? What is official Supercross 5 going to be like once they've really got in their TLC, adjusted on, warped upon, fixed upon, adjusted upon th this uh, sort of like milestone mixed with MX versus ATV physics system. And once they get another two games down the road, then we're going to be somewhere potentially legendary, right? Then we're going to be where it's like, all right, now we're fucking getting somewhere, right? But now I can see where a lot of people will be looking at that early gameplay and literally think it's like a mobile game or think like, what the fuck are they doing? They're going to ruin the, the Milestone franchise. You got to understand it, it takes this first step, right? And this is the hardest step of it when you try to dig deep in the physics and really like change the entire physics from the core of the game it's going to seem a little weird at first it's going to seem a little janky at first but if they can just keep on it and they don't let all their weird ass little super casual fanboys stray stray away their opinions and make them go back to the original milestone physics all of a sudden because oh we got see we got three oh shit like, you know, if they can keep to what they're doing and work hard at it and fix upon those physics and keep working on it, keep getting a little closer to reflex, a little further away from, like, the unleashed, untamed days, get it more like reflex, right? Then they'll be really on to something. I'm just saying they'll be really on to something. So, believe it or not, it, I mean, like... I don't know. Like it was, it was kind of like cheesy. Like, oh, wow, what the fuck is this? A little bit when I was watching that gameplay, but at the same time, I was thinking in the back of my mind, like, damn, this is the first time we've actually seen Milestone get any sort of MX versus ATV style physics in their game. You know what I mean? So this could equal a lot of things. This could equal way bigger jumping on free ride maps. Way better of a whip system, right? This could equal um, being able to whip both thumbsticks the same direction like it is in reflex and alive and all that shit and still be able to corner you know what i mean um with your thumbsticks the same direction in a corner right so this could equal a lot right here and so they must have been in cahoots and been talking with mx versus atv through all this because there's no way they just accidentally made it that much like mx versus atv there's no way dude it literally looks like you mixed the Fisher Monster Supergirls game with Unleashed. I mean, that's literally to a T what it looks like. So there had to have been some sharing of physics and some, well, let's take this bike physics feel from this and this kind of thing since they now are under the same uh, parent company as MX vs. ADV. There had to, th this, that had to be what happened. Had to be. So, and that's just interesting as shit because... What, what does this mean for the next game and the next game, right? It's like, think about if they inject a, even a little more MX or Z to be into it. Now you've got this cool, like, milestone ground physics mixed with MX or Z to be air physics style game going on, right? And then if they can inject more of, like, the free ride map design of the MX or Z to be series and the, all the other shit, like the, uh, you know, the Enduro series type, type vibe thing, um... All of that. I mean, like, think about that, though, dude. Would that not be sick if they can get that kind of combination-style game? I didn't even really think this was going to happen. I didn't even really think this was going to be possible. But apparently it is, because that's what this newer gameplay is looking like. I was fairly shocked by it. But I just don't want people to get the sort of opinion, like, what the fuck is this? Why don't they just go back to the way it was in the first Supergross game, right? I can see a lot of dumbasses saying that. Listen, you got to understand, they're, they're taking baby steps to try to get you something different, try to get you something better than this, because this is just, I mean, this is kind of like a, the first Supergross game is really a, it's really a trick on your mind is what it is. I mean, look at that. I just cased that quad and, like, my suspension didn't even compress all the way. What the fuck is that? You know what I mean? Like, th this this is truly a mobile motocross game. The first Supercross game, that's what it is. It's a mobile Supercross game. I'm just telling you right now. You never wreck. You can overjump shit to the moon and back. Never pop off the bike. 
the, it's just so arcadey, like so boring. The whoops, there's literally no skill whatsoever to the whoops. There's hardly any leaning forward and backwards hucking on anything. And a lot of you guys like the first Supercross game because of how easy it is, because of how arcadey it is. You like it because you feel like you're James Stewart in a day on the game, or you feel like you're Eli Tomac in a day on the game. And that's why you like it, because you feel really fast, really good at the game, really quickly at the game. But that's not what makes a good motocross game. A really um, narrow skill gap and small skill gap to a motocross game is not what makes a good motocross game. But a lot of you guys are getting tricked because it seems fun. It seems like it feels good because you can do all these things literally the first day playing the game and get around a, a supercross track the first day playing the game. But that's not really how it should be in a motocross game, man. It should be a progression. It should be a workup. There should be more skill gap. So there's actually like like substance to it and de a deepness to the progression of the game and there's literally none of that in the first supercross game it's it's just so arcadey that there's just none of it so that's what i'm saying don't get caught up in that well they should just go back to the first supercross games physics don't get caught up in that you may have to bear with this monster Energy supercross 3 being a little bit weird a little bit janky a little bit different because they're just now starting to integrate some of those mx versus atv style physics but once you get to supercross 4 and in the official Supercross 5 game, then you'll start really seeing what I'm talking about when you start getting those more natural whips and the more natural jumping and the the leaning and the seat bouncing of like a reflex style game in here. You know, once you start getting those sort of real true core MX versus ADV skill gap elements, then you'll understand what the hell I'm talking about right now. But at first glance, it might seem like, what the fuck is that? But you, you got to you got to understand the long term of what it potentially could be. So either way, um, but I can, like I say, I can understand the side of you guys going, what the hell is this mobile game? Like I, I get it, but at the same time, it's like, you got to remember finally, that it seems like they're doing at least something a little bit different with the physics. It's like, holy shit, finally, something a little bit different than versus the same old, same old, same old, same. You know, I guess that's just in my mind overrides the the kind of more janky mobile aspect look of it. It's finally, they're fucking doing something with the physics. They're actually changing it, you know, and it's like, oh my God, it's so needed. It's not even funny. Um because the milestone games are, have been such a such a trickery, really, with the the way the graphics look, the way the how arcadey the physics are, it's really tricking you into thinking that it's a solid, deep, really good, realistic, you know, arcade motocross game. When in reality, it couldn't be any further from that if it tried. You know what I mean? Like it's it's so far from being that reflex level realism or anything like that. I mean, it's so far, it's not even funny. And the only way they can get it closer to that is doing what they seem to be doing. They almost like stripping down the physics, stripping down the way the game is and rebuilding those physics from the ground up, which is going to make it look janky at first. But once they get it polished, once they get the TLC put into it, which may not happen in Supercross 3, Supercross 3 may come out and be kind of shitty, but if they can keep on it, and then around Supercross 4 and 5, it may be more of that game we're all really wanting out of it. You know what I'm getting at? So just don't forget those things. Just keep them in the back of your mind when Supercross 3 comes out. But either way, I'll keep on covering it, keep on looking at it. But see, this is something that a, a person, a, a mind of a person that really knows what the fuck is going on. I bet you won't hear anybody else make a video like this that really goes into this, this detail, this understanding of the way physics work in motocross games. I guarantee you, you will not see another video out there like this, dude. You're just not, because people don't even understand it to that level. And then I understand the whole simulator side and being a pro at a simulator and how that is, right? So then you, you it's not that you have to compare it to that, but you can take that into account when you're considering, like, what's more realistic, what's not quite as realistic. And then me playing so much Reflex over the years gives me the ability to know what's good in an arcade motocross game separating from a simulator, Right, And then me riding and racing in real life for a decade also gives me a whole nother level and layer of understanding of how real life riding is and how real life dirt bike feels and the whole nine of that. I'm not saying I'm Eli Tomac in real life. I'm not even saying I'm fucking, it, you know, even on a pro level. I'm not even on a pro level in real life. But I, I've rode long enough and 
I, 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 I'm to the point where I understand what the hell is going on, right? I'm not like some beginner-ass scrub in real life, right? Like, I know what's going on real life motocross. I've, I've rode 125s, 252 strokes, 254 strokes, 450s, um, rode on real life, full-blown arena cross tracks, rode on all different 100... 30 150 foot tabletop motocross tracks whipping her all the way sideways i've done all that shit in real life right like uh if i could like put it into some sort of uh spectrum i was i was somewhere in that basically like b class local dude and probably like that i don't know maybe c class at loretta's i don't even fucking know but like you know b class local dude right that's basically what i what level i was at in real life when i was really going hard at it and uh so so i understand it's not just it's not just coming from this weird ass like this kid don't even ride in real life he don't know what the hell he's talking about no it's coming from all that and taking into consideration in arcade motocross games got to have a certain level of fun factor it's it's got to have a certain level of Almost where where some of the tracks get just a little bit of an injection of like fantasy size jumps, a little bit bigger scaling for it to have that fun factor, right? Now, if it's a simulator, then you can make things more one-to-one scale and it's all good because it's a fucking simulator, right? But when it's an arcade game, you've got to inject at least on some of the tracks. Okay, to have some of them that are one-to-one scale in an arcade game, but you also want to have some of them that have a little bit more of that Big jump, that's one of the big things that made Reflex's Supercross default track so much fun because some of them had some bigger triples, bigger jumps, bigger quad rhythms that were really challenging. You had to get traction out of the corner. You had to know how to seat bounce. You had to, you had to learn all the, the different elements of the game to be able to do that, right? Whereas when you hop on like the first Supercross game, there's really just none of it. There's really just none of it. I mean, like, it's just so basic and boring when you really step back and look at what the first official Monster Series Supercross game really is. You know what I mean? You can look past all the bullshit graphics and the super arcadey feeling to it. If you can really realize what the first Supercross game is, then you'll understand what I'm talking about. But if you're not that deep into motocross gaming, maybe this is like your first, you know, motocross Supercross game you've ever played, then you won't know what the fuck I'm talking about at all. You see what I'm saying? But like if you took any of those pro dudes and really sat them down and had them played like Reflex on the 360 for a month straight, and then had them come and play the official Monster Energy Supercross game, I fucking promise you, they would say that Reflex was a hundred times the skill gap in the game of what official Monster Energy Supercross game is. And if you had them go play Simulator for a month straight or two months straight, I promise you they would say MX Simulator is a thousand times the game that the official Monster Energy Supercross game is, like physics-wise, bike movement, skill gap, deepness, progression, all that kind of shit. I promise you they would say that. But they don't do that because they're sponsored and kind of involved in Supercross, and you see them having to go in there and play the game before it comes out, so you think that's like they, they're sitting there saying that this game's super realistic. It's not really even fucking like that. It's called Advertising 101, bitch. They don't... You think fucking Eli Tomac's really sitting there drinking Monster Energies? Hell to the fucking no, he's not. You see what I'm saying? Same with them going in there and playing the official Supergoss games. They don't give a shit. That's how that how it works, right? It's a lot of false, fake advertising, man. Advertising really is just a load of bullshit at the end of the day. So you gotta be careful what you believe, what you see, what you think that somebody is liking or disliking. When you come to somebody like me, this is what I do all day, every day. I play these games, okay? This is what I do. I play all these games. Pro race in a simulator. Top fives and 450 main events in a simulator. Full-blown understand that game, right? Played Reflex for so many years. Like, every single... Oh, my God. I, I just... I can't even fathom the amount of nights I've had on Reflex. My YouTube channel doesn't really, like, portray that, but I swear to God, before I, right before I got into YouTube... I was playing Reflex as hard as anybody could play it for like four years straight. I don't know how I could have played it much more because what I was basically doing was riding in real life till it got dark and then playing Reflex until I couldn't anymore and I passed out. Basically every single night, that's what I did from like 2010 to fucking 2015, basically, or 2014, four or five years, right? That's pretty much what I did, dog. <laughs> Uh, and, and that was my life. That was literally my life was riding in real life every single day. And then as soon as I quit riding in real life for that day, I'd get on reflex and ride some more, but it was in a virtual world, right? And then it all went to MX simulator after that. But either way, just saying, 
Uh, we're going to have to wait and see if some more gameplay, some more shit when they uh, really start announcing more stuff on the game. Then we'll come in here and make another video. But I just want to get in here and kind of talk about this, explain a couple things. So either way. So either way. Appreciate you guys watching all the videos. Later, dude.